Welcome coaches and we're live. This is Karen Capella and I'm so excited to have with me today Kathy and Brad Lambert from KBL Impact Partners. So welcome Kathy and Brad. Thank you. Thank you Karen. Welcome. We're excited to be here Karen. <laughs> I'm Great so excited. To to, I'm so excited to have you here. And uh, I want to, so this is a what's working now interview, and I know you have lots of tips to share with the coaches, but first of all, tell us a little bit about your business. What do you do? Well, by nature, we refer to ourselves as social entrepreneurs. And uh, 23 years ago, we started a nonprofit organization headquartered in the St. Louis region, Connections to Success. Uh, and after doing that for a long period of time, we decided uh, it was time to uh, pass the reins over to new leadership. So in January, we transitioned from that role and started what we're doing now, which is an LLC called KBL Impact Partners. And our mission is, is to really empower other nonprofits, particularly small to medium sized uh, organizations that are looking to grow and scale their impact. And uh, basically, we want to take all the lessons that we've learned over 23 years and pass them on to uh, the next generation of new nonprofits to help them become successful. Oh, my gosh. And I know you were really successful. So, Kathy, do you want to tell us some of the results you had as nonprofit leaders before you came into your own business? So as nonprofit leaders, we... Um, we actually, we started with a zero 23 years ago, right? With um, just clothes out of the trunk of our car. But we had zero money, which we started, but we raised over 44 million in the 23 years. And what we realized, we took a look at that and, and we raised 60% of that within the last six and seven years. So that's what we really took. We took time and we unpacked that to say, what is it? And, um, and actually, Karen, it, it was just so, I think it was a divine order that we met. Um, because one of the things when you and I met, it was focusing in on the one thing. And that's what really we did when um, we began to raise even more money. So that's, that's what we're hoping to teach other nonprofits. Well, I don't think there's anything hoping about it because I know you are already doing that and you've had some great results in your business. So can uh, your first cohort is going through your program four months into your business. Can you tell us some of the results that some of these nonprofits are getting? So some of the nonprofits are they are raising more money than they ever have in the last, let's say, four years since they've been in existence. Another nonprofit, she's not only raising money, but she's also developing partnerships and infrastructure within her organization to really help set that organization up to go to that next level. And all of them are really creating, they're, they're activating, they're taking steps necessary to, to really create the funds that they need for their organizations. We have a saying that no mission no money, no mission. <laughs> and and that that was true for you day on the first day, but after that, yeah, forget really. it. You you had you had a lot That's of money right. and a mission, <laughs> right? So right. I want to ask you. Um, I'm going to ask you for some tips in a minute, but I want to ask you what has um, this result of being in your own business of filling this first cohort within four months of opening your doors? What has that meant to your life? Well, it's, uh, I, I can't, I could speak the whole time just about that factor alone, Karen. It's been such a, a shift for us and a shift that we're so excited about. Um, we love to help people. Now we're getting to help organizations that help people. And uh, we're having, we're having fun. It's, it doesn't feel like work. Uh, creating something new. I mean, I said earlier, we're, we're entrepreneurial and we love to create new things. We love to try new things. We love seeing the response from uh, people that are in our training. And, uh, and the other important part is, is that we're not working as hard as we used to. We're not That's grinding right. those 50, 60 hour weeks anymore. 
Uh, and, and our goal, once we get everything built out, which should be finished here after our first cohort, is we want to see this thing level out at about 20 to 25 hours a week. And, uh, and, and yet make a six figure income and have time to enjoy a lot of the things that we missed over the past 23 years, including uh, our vacation in Tucson every winter, which we're scheduled to do for two months in 2022. We never could have done that before. So, uh, you know, the, the, the work that we're doing, we can do whenever we want, wherever we want and how much we want. So, Right. It's a complete different lifestyle, and and we're totally loving it. <laughs> complete freedom. <laughs> what about you, Kathy? <laughs> well, I just it's just so exciting, and I think for me personally, it's um, I was so passionate about the work that we did at Connections to Success, and one of the things, Karen, participating with your class and just with the wonderful way that you have going about it is that I found my zone of genius. And that's what Brad and I think have really narrowed in. And so with that zone of genius, I really found my passion. And it feels so good to be doing something every day that I absolutely love doing. And as Brad mentioned about helping other people and helping other organizations to be successful and to help scale their impact, um, it just, it's just so exciting. And I'm not working nearly as hard at all. It's a different kind of it's a different kind of um, work. It's it has just a lot of meaning, but yet I have a balanced life. Wow, that sounds really great. So, what are you doing? You know, what is working to scale your hours way down, but also give you the income that you want? What are some tips you could give to some of our coaches? So, one of the things, and again through the class is that we were looking and i think you know when you and i met the first time too i kept telling i'm looking for a system <laughs> i'm looking for a system on how to start our business and at that time didn't really know what it was but one of the things with through the class and what we've learned is that we could develop a system and we could develop a way of working with nonprofits and helping to create maybe a class and so that's what we did we, within the first, gosh, I think four to six weeks, we really came up with that we could put together a program for nonprofits, and it could be a 12-week program called Frame Up for Funding. By the 10th week, we were actually launching the program. The program that you have, the 12 weeks, the QSI, the Quick Start, it works. You have to work it. And I think what we've learned through that, too, is that conversations are so key and finding out from uh, from your markets like who who within your market and who are the clients and what is your target and talking with them to find out what do they need and i think that was one of the biggest things is we had an idea in our head but when we began to have those conversations things shifted and changed and that's how we began to develop a program is based on those conversations and being able to be adaptable, but also putting in the work to get it done. Yeah, that is so great. And I remember when you and I met Kathy and it was kind of funny because Brad was off hiking and you guys were, were referred to me in Tucson. And I remember my sweetie said to me, now don't go advising and coaching this per poor person when you go meet her for lunch, you know, like just, just get to know her. And so, and, and I get, I get a lot of people saying, Oh, you need to meet so-and-so, but for some reason, this one was a great one and we hit it off immediately. <laughs> and then you started telling me what you were doing. And I remember this is my, this is my genius work. I will, I will own up to it. I remember I pinpointed your, what I would call your million dollar idea, right? You did. You were talking. So this is a tip I want everyone to hear about. Kathy was talking to me about funding in nonprofits. And I knew she knew what she was talking about. But she started saying, you know, we work so well with partners. And if you get mm -hmm. partners, you can get funded. And, and me personally, I was the oldest of six kids. I never wanted partners. I was always the leader. I was always doing all of the work. Partners were always very 
um, <clears throat> it took a lot of, out of me to have partners. So when Kathy started talking about partners, and then all of a sudden she's partnering with her husband, I thought, this woman knows what she's talking about with partnerships. And that is what that is your genius, Kathy, and also yours, Brad. And so I want to just say to to the coaches, I think that's a tip. Brad, what what kind of a tip would you give some coaches if they were thinking of partnering with people? Well, I, I think, Karen, one of the one of the most important things that came to us early on was this term you introduced called signature program, mm -hmm. uh, because we had all these experiences in the nonprofit world that we wanted to be able to share, but how do we create those into a system and not just hang our shingle out and saying, we're consultants, we've been in the nonprofit world for 23 years, how can we help you? We had to refine it to, and to really boil it down to what you termed a signature program and who's our, who's our ideal client Mm -hmm. and then begin talking to them and to really find out what are they looking for? What are their needs? Uh, so how, how can we connect to them after knowing what their needs are, which, which is the market research conversation. So I think that really got us on the road. And then from there, we came back and developed our 12 week curriculum called frame up for funding. None of that was remotely in our heads before we started QSI. Uh, so that all came out pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, as Kathy said, we were able to to get our first class launched in uh, late June, uh, which which has been uh, tremendous. We're now recruiting for our second class, which is going to begin August 24th. So um, uh, it, it, it really helped us frame things up. It helped give us clarity. And, uh, you know, we're we're just going crazy now <laughs> <laughs> and you know um would you would you be able to share some of your financial results with the coaches do you feel comfortable with that oh sure sure well uh you know i would say from we started qsi i think in uh early april and uh we had we had financial commitments that started coming in in may and to date we're at about eighty thousand dollars uh, of, of uh, committed income. And, um, you know, as I said, we're, we're launching, launching our second uh, class at the end of August. We're going to overlap them by about a month. And then uh, we're hoping to try to get a third one in before the end of the year. So, so we, uh, we think we're going to end the year very robustly and uh, be well on our way to uh, a nice uh, one year income in our first year at KBL. Yeah, that's great. And Kathy, how about you? What do you have to say about that? Well, I just, if somebody would have told me, if you would have told me that we would be, you know, on our way to six figures at this time, I would have thought you were crazy. And, but to see it happen and just, it's just like this flow. And we're in, as you said, our genius zone. And um, it's, it's exciting. It's really exciting and um, it can happen. It can happen and it's available to everybody. And it's just all I think in, in our mindset. And I think that's one of the biggest things I've learned also is that shift in that mindset and to have an abundant mindset and not that scarcity. And what tips would you give to our coaches about how do you have that abundance mindset? You know, it's um, I take time every day in the morning for me, and it can be different times for other people. But every day, I think it's really important that um, I get my mind set right through meditation, through affirmations. And in the class, you sent us some great um, some YouTubes <laughs> that I listen to while I'm working um, that promote money and abundance. And, but it's really, I think, really having that mindset and taking the time to really making that shift. The other part too is in the class, we, are, we were assigned a peer, a peer support person. And I think that that's like a buddy and that helped too. And so not only with accountability to the class every week, but also to my buddy in the class. 
and just really being thoughtful and have it on the forefront of shifting that mindset. And, um, and it happens and it's, it works. So the, we've talked about a lot of different things that have made you very successful market research conversations, mindset shifts, um, getting into your zone of genius and designing your signature program. Um, anything else you want to add, Brad, as, as a tip to our uh, coaches today? I have three, three words that I use all the time now. Conversations create cash. <laughs> That's uh, right. You got to be talking to people. You got to be talking to people all the time. What's on their minds? What are they looking for? What do they need? And then, uh, you know, create something that uh, meets that need. And that's the quickest way to attract them to you because clients are looking for help. Uh, and in most cases, they have the money to pay you for that help. You just have right. to convince them that you understand their problem and you are the solution. Fantastic. <laughs> Um, any final words of advice you would give to a coach who's out there saying, you know, I kind of want, I want to get my business going. I haven't been getting the results and the momentum I want. Um, what would you say to them? I would say they need to take the next QSI. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, I love you. <laughs> I would tell them that they need to take it. You have a system. It creates accountability. And one of the things also that another tip that I would pass on is to do something every day that is moving, that's action oriented, that's moving you towards the goals that you have. And I think in QSI, that's where you learn and you have a system to be able to be accountable to yourself and to get your business going. Yeah, you know, it's very interesting because I, I you said to me you wanted a system and I said, oh, I, I have one. But the cool thing is um, what, what we've been able to do, and this has taken me years, is really hook up the day-to-day -day actions to the results. And I think, you know, even in the beginning of my business, I didn't quite understand and I wasn't focused on what are those actions that are really driving my results. And I think when we once we do that, and you and Brad have done that beautifully, that it really makes a difference. Brad, any words of advice? Well, I, I would say this, uh, none of us have time to create the wheel again. So uh, we're all looking for ways that we can replicate what others are successfully doing, or at least I am. And uh, when I first got in QSI, I immediately said, this is a system we can replicate. We can change it to fit our training, our the types of information that we want to give to people. But it's, it's a system, it's replicable, and uh, it makes sense, uh, and, and it works. So... It works. Stop trying to figure it out on your own. It takes too long. <laughs> Just jump that, in and go. That is true, right? You really can collapse the learning curve when you stand on the shoulders of others. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. I look at what we've done in three or four months, and uh, we we clearly wouldn't be here without uh, this type of support. Absolutely. You know, one other thing, Karen, if it's okay if I interject, mm -hmm. I was just thinking about this and, and Brad, as you were talking and just thinking about our experience going through QSI and, you know, so many times, and I know I've thought the same thing, I'll do it later, I'll do it another time. And then if I stop and I think, and I guess this is what I would be asking people and other coaches is, do you want to be at the same place you are today next year? And if they don't, then what's going to change? What are you going to do differently to get there, to make it different? And I think that's one of the biggest things is to take that action and to be able to take, it's everything we do is a risk, but to take that risk and um, with a proven system, it, it makes it happen. And having, as you said, those action steps that are there and it's that reminder that this is what you have to do, um, it can it can get done and you can be have that business that you've wanted to have and it can happen. Definitely. And Brad, I know um, you you said I told you guys that you could make this kind of money in your own business. And what did you what did you think at the beginning, Brad? I said uh, I should have gone to this meeting with with you, Kathy, because <laughs> I I don't know what you guys were drinking, but it, I'm not adding the numbers up. 
Well, and I remember I came back and I told him, I told Brad, okay, I want you, we're going to do a Zoom call when we get back to St. Louis. And I want you to meet the person that I'm going to be working with. <laughs> you remember that? And then I remember that when we got together and then that's Karen, when you said, no, no, you both need to work together. <laughs> Yeah, this is about partnership and KBL Impact Partners. You're helping with partnerships for Frame Up for Funding. <laughs> Kathy and Brad, you are amazing. You're an inspiration, really, to everyone. You've done the work. And that's what happens. I, I think you said that earlier, Kathy. When you do the work, it works. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for sharing your story here today and inspiring other coaches to do the same. And um, we'll, we'll be looking forward to hearing uh, from you at the end of the year and see how all is this turning out. We're excited to uh, keep following with you. <laughs> That's right. All right. <laughs> Thank you.